Humanity is once again entering a period of radical transformation in which technology has the potential to significantly raise the basic standards of living for every man, woman, and child on the planet. Within a generation, we will be able to provide goods and services once reserved for the wealthy few to any and all who need them or desire them. This is due to the exponential growth of progress, which has an accelerating rate of change due to the compounding effect, that being new technologies and knowledge building on existing technologies and knowledge, which in turn creates even more innovation and leads to new applications for society. In relation to the period of radical transformation we are currently in, the technological revolution, as we have discussed quite intensively, there are four foundational technologies that serve as a groundwork for new technologies to be built off of. The pillars of the technological revolution, computing, global connectivity, big data, and AI. There are numerous ways these core pillars will interact with one another, which will lead to countless technologies, devices, and knowledge gained, from 3D printing, autonomous vehicles, blockchain, batteries, remote surgeries, virtual and augmented reality, robotics, the list can go on and on. These devices in turn will further fuel the feedback loop of progress and lead to mass changes in society, from energy generation, monetary systems, space colonization, automation, and much more. Now before we get to discussing these society-altering outcomes and applications, it is first worth making sure we understand the trap of progress. This video is brought to you by our startup Earth One. Check it out for our solutions to the climate crisis. Additionally, consider joining our YouTube membership to support the production of more high-quality content. While we have told the story of humanity, progress, and referred to its compounding nature many times in the past, we have yet to truly define progress and have been only referring to it as some invisible force driving society forward. So you may ask, what is progress? You might think that question is so subjective and culturally relative as to be forever unanswerable. In fact, it's one of the easier questions to answer. Most people agree that life is better than death, health is better than sickness, substance is better than hunger, abundance is better than poverty, peace is better than war. Safety is better than danger. Freedom is better than tyranny. Equal rights are better than bigotry and discrimination. Literacy is better than illiteracy. Knowledge is better than ignorance. Intelligence is better than dull-wittedness. Happiness is better than misery. Opportunities to enjoy family, friends, culture, and nature are better than drudgery and monotony. All these things can be measured, and if they have increased over time, that is progress. And so, with progress defined, it is easy to see why as a society we yearn for it and strive to continue its march forward. On this forward momentum of progress, however, we must be aware that progress has an internal logic that can lead beyond reason to catastrophe. A seductive trail of successes may end in a trap. In other words, a progress trap is a solution to a problem that at first is successful, but in time can create conditions and problems that are worse than the original. A powerful metaphor to highlight this is that of Paleolithic hunters who by learning how to kill two mammoths instead of one had made progress. Those who learned how to kill 200 by driving a whole herd off a cliff had made too much. They lived high for a while, and then starved. This point was made to highlight the fact that progress forward doesn't always yield the results we'd expect. In our modern society, this translates to technological progress. For instance, consider the use of fossil fuels. While at first a seemingly cheap and abundant source of energy, we are now seeing the catastrophic effects of it in terms of climate change. The same logic can apply to various technologies, such as the study of the atom leading to the atomic bomb, our hyperconnected society leading to a rise in mental health problems, and so on. What these problems teach us is that progress for the sake of progress is a wrong approach to take, and we must be aware of the potential traps to avoid or be able to respond to them quickly as we discover them. Translating to the technological revolution, inevitably there will be progress traps along the way, but by being thoughtful on how we apply our progress, we can achieve long-term prosperity. This rings especially true for one of the largest and most immediate traps we are facing, automation, which is often confused with being the technological revolution in and of itself. Job displacement caused by technological change, while seeming like a modern concept, has been happening for hundreds of years and can be traced back to the 18th century, the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution, in which mechanized industrialization began to reshape society. As we have previously discussed, this first impacted the textile and agricultural industries, but then began to spread across society, as electricity became a utility and no longer had to be generated in-house. As mechanized industrialization and electrification advanced, and paired with the concept of the assembly line, gave way to our age of mass production. While these changes did result in the displacement of physical labor and blue-collar jobs, they were often replaced in the form of machine operators or assembly line workers, as manufacturing was ramping up across all industries of society to produce new goods and services and fit the needs of a population growing at an accelerated rate. 
Additionally, just as in the agricultural revolution, where not every member of society had to be a hunter-gatherer, so too in machines and electricity freeing up physical labor, could an increasing number of individuals pursue a higher education, leading to the birth of many of what we now call the STEM fields, and thereby the acquisition of new knowledge and emergence of new technologies. Arguably the most important of which was electronics and computing technology, which alone has led to the creation of countless new jobs and even industries, from the IT industry, data entry jobs, software developers, network engineers, technicians, mechatronics engineers, bloggers, streamers, etc. And this doesn't even include jobs created from increasing scientific researchers, the medical field, and so on. Because of these factors, we sometimes don't even consider how many jobs have been replaced. As one example of many, pre-industrialization, 50-80% to 80 of a society had to be in the agricultural industry in order to provide enough subsistence for the population. Presently, that number is closer to 1%, with it falling from 41% to 2% between 1900 and 2000. With this drastic drop attributable to technological progress, from the seed drill and fertilizers, to modern large-scale farming machines. This then might lead one to believe that this technological revolution will be no different than past industrial revolutions, and that all lost jobs will be replaced. But in that line of thinking, there's a key difference missing. In past revolutions, job displacement was caused by machines just replacing human muscle. The premise of the technological revolution is that machines in the workforce are beginning to replace jobs that require our minds, which can then be paired with machines that replace human muscle. Now this has been happening for decades, albeit in a slower fashion as computing technology has improved and thus fields such as robotics. In 1980, 25 people were employed for every $1 million in manufacturing output. As of 2018, that number is now down to 5 people. Additionally, from 2000 to 2010, the US lost about 5.6 million manufacturing jobs, with 85% of those losses attributable to technological change, more specifically, automation. This automation has been of great consequence and had numerous knock-on effects. For instance, due to automation and therefore manufacturing job losses in the Rust Belt of America, that anger was taken, directed towards immigrants, and in large part led to the election of Trump. And all of this was caused by a basic level of automation. We are now arriving at an inflection point with automation in which advances in fields such as computing, mechatronics, and robotics are being paired with advanced algorithms such as those in the fields of deep and machine learning, or as people commonly refer to it, AI. These advances are giving machines the ability to perform complex tasks, even those involving high degrees of dexterity, and in the coming years, these will only get better as algorithmic training methods such as simulation training and reinforcement learning improve. Growth in industrial robotics is increasing year over year at an accelerated rate, and we are currently on a projected track on the low end to lose another 20 million manufacturing jobs globally by 2030. The manufacturing sector as we have seen has already been decimated by automation over the decades, and it seems this will only continue to accelerate going forward. In addition to this, and different from past automation, with this inflection point of the four pillars of the technological revolution, nearly every field and all jobs within them, both blue and white collar are at risk. And we are about to witness a transition on the scale of the early 1900s, when much of global industry switched from farming to factory work. Beyond the manufacturing sector, automation is looking to displace one-fifth of the global workforce, that being 800 million to 1 billion jobs by 2030, within the US alone 39 to 73 million jobs at risk. To put those numbers in perspective, during the Great Depression, the unemployment rate was 25%, and with automation, by 2030, we can be looking at rates ranging from 25% at a minimum to upwards of 50%. From automated warehouses, automated cooks, autonomous logistics, robotic vertical farming, additive construction, self-service concierges, and so on, automation is coming for every industry. Even jobs created due to computers in the first place are being replaced due to robotic process automation, RPAs, pieces of software more morbidly referred to as boomer removers, because they are replacing in greater speed many common office jobs such as data entry, invoice generation, expense reports, payroll, etc. Paired with cloud computing, big data analytics, and AI, these pieces of software are and will continue to get more advanced as the years progress, and displace even more jobs. Beyond RPAs, other jobs software-based automation can displace as paralegals with the ability to process thousands of documents instantaneously, radiologists in detecting cancer and medical scans, accountants and auditors, the list can go on and on. In many of today's workplaces, AI has even been promoted to middle management, in industries from service to banking and food prep. Software now does a supervisory work of training workers, monitoring quality, and reviewing performance. We may want to stop worrying about killer droids and kamikaze drones, and instead start worrying about the mundane, mediocre apps and services that allow companies to process payroll 20% more efficiently, or determine benefits eligibility with fewer human caseworkers. 
Even jobs thought to be safe havens are a target for software. For instance, OpenAI's language learning model GPT-3, which can produce articles that look like they were written by a journalist and are starting to be seen with increasing frequency across the web. We can go on and on talking about the jobs and industries that face threats due to automation, many of which will have videos of their own in the future. Coming back on topic, in addition to the lost jobs caused directly by technological automation, we must also consider the cascade effects. For instance, with less human truckers on the road, less hospitality and retail jobs would be needed in the form of highway hotels and motels, fast food, and restaurants. And another factor that adds fuel to the fire is that global population growth is now slowing, so by extension less workers will be needed. To add to this, the current pandemic has greatly accelerated the automation transition. What would have taken a decade to play out has now happened over the course of a year. The US alone lost over 25 million jobs at the peak of the pandemic, and while some have come back and are coming back, others will never return. Economists predict that over 40% of the jobs lost during this pandemic are gone forever, and unfortunately, many of these lost jobs impact the workers that need it the most in the lower end of the wage spectrum. These jobs are dissipating as autonomous robots are able to work 24-7 with no lunch or bathroom breaks, lights, or even AC. From a purely profit perspective, it is not a hard decision for a company to make. The majority of these lost jobs are held by a growing class of the population referred to as the working poor. Individuals who work full-time hours, but because their wages are so low, they cannot break out of poverty due to living expenses, bills, and so on. We can see proof of this looking at the valuation of tech stocks and net worth of affluent individuals during the same time period where millions are losing their livelihoods. This is the reason many are calling this pandemic recovery K-shaped. Now the reasons for this recovery tie into many complex factors, but one of the largest being jobs currently safe from automation versus jobs that were on the chopping block for automation. Under the guise of pandemic layoffs, companies now have the ability to replace large swaths of the workforce with robotics, and because of this it is no surprise in the amounts of civil unrest we are seeing. We view this as an early warning of the automation progress trap we now face, and as automation moves across society, if unaddressed, civil unrest and other such issues will only continue to increase. So then, what options do we have to get through this automation conundrum to a more prosperous society on the other end? One of the most obvious solutions to the automation conundrum is employee retraining, upskilling, and education, which has been a strategy deployed in past revolutions as people were trained to become machine operators. In terms of the technological revolution, machine operators will be a role that will in large part be automated. However, it does bring up the opportunity to reskill those operators to become machine and robot maintenance specialists and technicians, or even enter the trades and roles such as electricians. Beyond this, going forward, many job opportunities and new jobs will be in STEM fields, from engineers, data scientists, programmers, etc. And while pursuing a formal degree and diploma will always be an option, there are many other ways to obtain expertise and knowledge in these fields. For instance, online learning platforms, YouTube, and coding boot camps to list a few. The internet has democratized access to knowledge, thereby giving everyone the ability to learn any skill from anywhere. Now while self-education to keep up in this technological era is important, we also believe it is a moral imperative of companies who are laying off due to automation to provide this for their employees. Some companies have and all should offer vouchers and access to online courses or coding boot camps for those employees and jobs that are no longer required due to technological change, and to additionally give opportunities for those employees who choose to participate to be reintegrated into a different part of the company. It is also worth mentioning that while we have been talking about retraining and education at the adult level, it is imperative that these technological skills such as programming are taught from a young age in schools to prepare children for the new job market. This solution to the automation conundrum, while important in the sense that everyone should be well educated and up to date in the prominent skill set of society, will only help so much when it comes to job displacement. There will still be a net job loss by a wide margin as automation progresses and impacts more industries. Additionally, it is unlikely that everyone would want to just focus on becoming a programmer or another STEM job role, nor should they. What makes a society rich is a diverse set of skills, and the key point of progress is that it allows people to pursue what they are truly passionate about. So then, if an individual is not interested in retraining or educating in STEM subjects and are unable to find a job in the field they are interested in, are they forever stuck in the gig economy? The gig economy refers to a labor market characterized by the prevalence of short-term contracts and freelance work as opposed to permanent jobs. Now the concept of freelancers and independent contractors isn't anything new. From marketers, programmers, graphic design, etc., due to the democratization of the internet and maturation of online platforms, gig work takes this concept to a new extreme and can cover a wide array of jobs, as seen on platforms such as Fiverr or Upwork, from music production, voiceovers and business consultation, to making videos on YouTube, putting music on Spotify, driving for Uber, walking pets on Rover, and so on. 
This type of gig work and its growing prevalence should serve as a buffer and fallback as automation progresses, and in many cases has. In the USA, 36% of the country reported working as a freelance or gig worker in 2019, with 53% of people between 18 and 34 reporting gig work as their primary source of income. There is no doubt that as automation progresses, these percentages will only increase. However, due to this rapid growth in gig employment and how new this type of work is, there are many valid concerns to be addressed. In some ways, the gig economy doesn't have any borders. Due to the internet and globalization, there is a low barrier to entry, and anyone can participate in it if they have the skills or the time. It is worth mentioning that this notion of remote work has been greatly popularized and brought to the mainstream due to the current pandemic, and now many understand that the majority of jobs in the digital sphere could be performed from anywhere in the world. On one hand, this is great for location flexibility, allowing the ability to work from anywhere and providing the means for those in poverty in any part of the world to work their way out of it by doing things they are passionate about. On the other hand, it also greatly increases competition for jobs, and what might be considered a high rate of pay in one part of the world, say Nairobi or Thailand, could barely be scratching the minimum wage in another, say England or the USA. In many cases, minimum wage laws are antiquated and cannot deal with the complexity of this problem. Another instance this can be seen in is with companies like Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and Instacart, in which after insurance, wear and tear on your vehicle, and more, often drivers end up making less than minimum wage, with some reports indicating that up to 75% of drivers are making below minimum wage. On top of this, these same companies have lobbied to make it so they don't have to classify their gig workers as employees, such as with Prop 22 in California. This means they still don't have to pay minimum wage and additionally don't have to provide retirement plans, education plans, healthcare coverage, etc. Now the duty to provide these services, whether it be from the private or public sector, is a topic best left for a video of its own in the future. However, the main point is that we need to think of solutions to these problems as we wait for policy to catch up. One innovation in how we can rethink the gig economy and workers can still benefit from technological change is called a platform co-op, which already generates more than $2.36 trillion in revenue across the globe. What are these cooperatives? Think Uber if drivers own significant equity in the company. Think Spotify if the music streaming service was in part owned by its musicians. There are abundant models for this, including Firmundo, a German digital selling platform that operates much like eBay, except the sellers on the platform are also its owners. Innovations like this are an example of ways we can gracefully automate while still reaping the rewards of increased production and new forms of work. They will also go a long way in solving problems such as wealth inequality, while to a certain degree wealth is earned, after a certain point it does not correlate to what an individual produces or gives back to society, and these levels of wealth inequality will only get worse as profits from automation productivity go to executives and shareholders and not to the society that enable them. Platform co-ops are one way to create a fairer, more equitable market and solve the problems of the gig economy. However, without other initiatives and policies implemented, this only serves as a short-term solution to the automation conundrum. Luckily, long-term solutions do exist, with the most popular and most likely to be implemented being a universal basic income, a topic which we will extensively cover in the next video in this technological revolution series. At this point, the video has concluded. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch it. If you enjoyed it, consider supporting us on YouTube membership to keep this brand growing. And if you have any topic suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Consider subscribing for more content and check out our website and parent company Earth One for sustainable living made simple. This has been Encore, you've been watching Futurology, and we'll see you again soon.